Welcome to episode 10 of ADV Podcast, our live show. We are very glad you guys are with us today. Absolutely. Guys, today uh, it's actually quite a, a big topic to cover. And it's something that I think everybody needs to be talking about. And for the longest time, people have kind of been ignoring the fact that China expects to be treated well and equally. And we're talking about the Chinese government here, by the way. You know, it's funny. What? Is I feel like if you go back to every episode we've done, you've started it by saying this is a big topic we have to cover today. Because we only cover big topics. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, anyway, like I was saying, China and Chinese people actually, um, as a result of that, because the whatever the Chinese government uh, pushes, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of spreads out into the diaspora around the world and, you know, into the sort of zeitgeist and all that kind of thing. So China and Chinese people expect the entire world to treat them to the highest standards and mm-hmm. very equally. However, they do, they do not treat other people, foreigners, to the same standard that they expect. Right. That's kind of what we're talking about. That is correct. So um, what's gotten you in such a glum mood today? I just haven't been getting much sleep these days. Okay. Yeah, it is. I guess like an ebb and flow of insomnia. Mm. I feel like you have that issue once in a while. Yeah, insomnia is uh, just, it's it's a hit song from, I think, the late 90s, early 2000s by Faithless. It's also uh, <laughs> Insomniac by Green Day. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, we're going to get into our first segment today, which is, you know, what's new? So there's a little incident that happened. It actually happened just before the last podcast, so two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and it's something we neglected to cover. It's something I wanted to cover. We're going to bring it up uh, so you guys can see what we're talking uh, about here behind us. And uh, I'll set the scene. This is in a bar in Guangzhou. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, these uh, the, the Hong Kong protests have been going on for a while now. Yeah. So there's a foreigner in the bar having a discussion. Um, and he was voicing support for the Hong Kong protesters. Mm-hmm. So can you tell everyone what happened to the, the guy? Well, this dumbass was mm-hmm. drunk, drunk white guy, yeah. Lao Wai, Gui Lao, we can call him. Yeah. Um, he was just spouting his mouth saying, free Hong Kong, they deserve their freedoms, blah, 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 all this kind of shit. Started a big fight. Um, actually, the guys kind of jumped him. In China, you have to understand that it's never one-on-one. So come out and fight the 12 of us, you coward. You coward. <laughs> um, I am not going to take this guy's side at all. No, He no. was a drunk idiot, and you don't go to mainland China and say this kind of stuff. Sure. We're allowed to say this kind of stuff. However, <laughs> yeah. Because we're not drunk and in a Chinese yeah. bar. Yeah, okay. Again, this, this kind of ties into what we're talking about today because... Chinese people are allowed to say they don't like Trump, for instance. Yeah. And they're not going to get attacked. No. Although if you're in like a redneck bar, maybe in the middle of nowhere, and you say, yeah. I love, uh, or I hate Hillary or something, then everybody might beat you up. Well, if you said, I hate Hillary in a redneck bar, they're going to love you. Well, you never know. Okay. Depends where you are. You're in like a very progressive redneck <laughs> yeah, bar. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. You're, in, you're in Austin, Texas, Austin, basically. Texas. Yeah, yeah, you're in Austin, Texas. Okay, anyway, like that's a, a silly example. But basically, what's happening now behind us is... Um, they forced him to sing the Chinese national anthem. Yeah. So and drink beer. Yeah. So maybe we can just go back to that. They, they were everyone was drinking, and I guess they obviously overheard him with his nonsense. And you should never get political in mainland China as a foreigner under the current climate. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter how justified you feel. Um, I know this is especially a problem for Americans, mm-hmm. at least that I've met in China. Is they feel as if they're still in America, no matter where they travel, Mm. um, and tend to spout out their usual political stuff. Because one thing I found now living in America recently is that Americans are very political and Mm -hmm. very vocal about their politics. Mm -hmm. They talk about who they support. They talk about why they don't like, you know, what the government's doing or their local municipality. That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But the thing is, when you go to other countries, you have to realize it's not the same elsewhere. Sure. You know, it's really not the same in most of the world, actually, because you, you can get into trouble. Sure. And uh, you can offend people. So talking about politics, religion, sex, you know, with strangers is usually something that you avoid in polite society. Yeah. Um, um, did you just say that America is not a polite society? Uh, well, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be like an yeah, American woman. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, to, to defend <laughs> my fellow Americans yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. Um, not to act butthurt or anything. I have. I will agree with you mm-hmm. that I do see this type of behavior. Um, I do see it from Australians a lot as well. Weirdly enough, I think we're like kinship or something. Mm, maybe. Um, but I do think that the people outspoken like this and cause shit like this, we've warned against this kind of behavior. Don't get drunk and talk politics in mainland China. You no. have to be an idiot. Absolutely. Um, 
but it's usually the lower end education scale sure. i'll say you know it's people that probably ran their mouth a little bit too much back home as well yeah anyway yeah. the thing is the fact of the matter is that he was beset upon by a, a, a veritable tribe of uh, locals and they well, what would you call it <laughs> sure <laughs> okay Let's go try um who basically a posse a posse okay who basically just uh, beat him into submission and forced him to sing the chinese national <laughs> anthem it's which, weird i'm like so torn on this clip because yeah, I, I i think it's funny i've been in situations where i haven't done anything wrong and i'm getting yeah. attacked by you know a mob of drunk chinese guys and forced sure. to drink all that kind of stuff. we've all been in that yeah, scenario yeah, sure. But this guy just deserved it. <laughs> if he's been there, if he's yeah. probably been there a while. You know. Especially right now. You see, right now in China still, because the Hong Kong protests have not died down, mm. um, the, the entire government message on TV and everything is basically Hong Kong is bad. The Hong Kong people, the, the protesters are bad. And mm. anyone who supports them is bad. Yeah. And so when these guys beat this guy up, they feel justified because... Sure. Their government, their police, their neighbors, their parents, everyone is telling them that that is the correct thing to do. Right. So um, that's why these kind of incidents happen. And that's why if you are currently in China, don't talk about Hong Kong, especially out in public, if you don't know who you're surrounded by. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was just going to say, even if, because this guy's kind of a bean sprout, yeah. even if he was like super jacked and managed to fight all these guys off, then the cops just come and they're like, cool, now you get life in prison. Yeah, because you got like beat up a bunch of Chinese nationals. So, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. For anyway, sure. let's uh, let's go into the next clip. And sure. uh, last time we talked about the whole Costco thing. Remember, there's basically if you want to talk about riots, you should go and see what the opening day of Costco in Shanghai was all about. That I'd classify that as a as a riot. People's lives are in danger. Yeah, I want to point <laughs> out a little a little bit yeah. of hypocrisy there. Is the, yeah. you know the the mainline let's nationalists go back a little bit. Sorry, going ape right now about how yeah, it's pause it there. Violet, the protesters in Hong Kong are and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile. We know what daily life in China is like, especially with the lost generation. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at any wet market. Look at any opening ceremony of a, a shop that's doing discounts. You'll see what a real riot looks like. I'll yeah, tell you anywhere what. where there's something free or a, a big <laughs> discount, you will yeah. see pushing, shoving, people being trampled, you know, right. all sorts of crap. Just, you know, it, it's kind of quite common. Not trying to do whataboutism here, by the way. No. Just just pointing that out. Sure. Um, now, what happened is, you know, there were all these queues for people to get into Costco. Now there are like three hour long queues for people to cancel their memberships. Yeah. Um, and the, one of the main reasons is they ran out of cheap Mao Tai. Mm, Mao Tai is Baijiu. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why people actually went and queued up in the first place. And these kind of big pushing and shoving things happened is because there was an incredible deal on Mao Tai, which is China's most famous Baijiu, which is their uh, rice wine alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, it's really strong. Yeah. It's usually like 58%, 112 Well, you can get the 30% variety or the 58% variety. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And it tastes like gas. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, so now um, they want their money back for their memberships. And an interesting thing is that the memberships for Costco in China are way cheaper than the memberships for Costco in, say, for instance, America. It's like mm -hmm. less than half, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. People make about six of the money. Right. Yeah, I yes. suppose so. But I mean, if you, you want to talk about equality and stuff, you know, a hamburger like a Big Mac costs the same there as it does here. That's no, actually cheaper. It's cheaper in mm. China? Oh, okay. Oh, then t forget that whole analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> right. Okay, so <laughs> anyway. just getting back to... Yeah, the actual getting, point. Yeah, getting back to the actual point, uh, Costco is still trying to figure <laughs> out that China works in a different way. Yeah. And, um, you know, you'll see this a lot with, uh, you know, Chinese people that move to places like America, they know how to game the system. Yeah. Because, you know, my wife's part of all these groups, um, and they're Chinese groups of Chinese people living in America. Huh. Hey, we got a... Why is there an ice cream truck every time? I don't know. It's just that time. Anyway, if you hear a noise. Um, and in these Chinese groups, they basically have instructions of how to cheat <laughs> all these retailers. Mm. They're like... If you sign up for this deal, you'll get a free gift package. And then if you cancel your subscription within 10 days, you will get the money back for the mm. sign up fee. So you get a free thing and you get your money back. And mm. they're like, woohoo, and they share it around and everyone does it. So, you know, when you're dealing with China, you have to understand that it's a different market and, uh, you know, you have to approach it differently than you would the rest of the world. And I think Costco is finding out the hard way in China. One might say, you got to understand. You got to understand China. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue on and see, see if there was anything else that was uh, new. 
This is all still Malta. Apparently, they had uh, security guards with loudspeakers, bullhorn shouting, Mayo Maltai, Mayo Maltai. Uh, anyway, yes, Simo, this, remember this a little bit. This is a 16 injured in China supermarket stampede over Hongbao. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll introduce the fact that uh, if you guys don't know Chinese, Hongbao means red envelope. Yeah. And red envelopes are these little packets that you give to people full of money around Chinese New Year, or for, mm-hmm. really for bribes as well. Yeah. Um, and they were, they were giving them away here, right? Yeah. And we can see there was a riot, there was a stampede, and this happens all the time. Yeah, this is in Sichuan, yeah. not Shanghai. And no. this is not Costco. <clears throat> this was just no. a new supermarket <clears throat> opening. Um, I've seen it with my own eyes. Mm. Okay, a number of time in number a number of times in China, and actually, I have a personal story about this. When I uh, this must be in two thousand eight, I was working for a training center, mm. <clears throat> and they asked us to go. They had I got lots of good stories from this place, by the way. You're going to find out a lot in the future. But Can't wait. Uh, they, <laughs> the the boss, this is that rapist boss. Mm. He made these packs of cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, little normal playing cards, but what With, he like did, naked figurines well, of his students. No, no, he oh. had photographs of all the female staff on the back kinda, of each card. Kind of called it. Yeah, okay, but they were in all these weird poses, wearing the uniform, like you know, in these really sexy poses. You still and, got those? Yeah, I do. Can I see them? I mean, yeah, sure. I don't have them here. Oh, so, oh we're on camera. So. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> I'll I'll try and dig them up for one of these upcoming ones. But it was it was hilarious. So. He had all these playing cards made up, right? And mm-hmm. then he had like brochures because he used to do training, like computer training and English yeah. and Japanese and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So now it turns out that what we were doing was illegal because the second time that we did this, the guys who went out, luckily it was my day off, all mm-hmm. got arrested. Mm-hmm. But basically he sent us out into Huajan Bay, which is that big electronics mm-hmm. market with flyers and these free packs of cards and just to like hand them out to you know passers-by <laughs> to get them interested in the training center turns out if you're a foreigner you're not allowed to do that no you can't hand yeah. out leaflets you're not allowed to do anything like that it's so such that's a common job to give a foreigner there for yeah because centers. you know it, it's effective especially people wanting to learn english they see a bunch of white faces and they're like okay that's where i want to go mm-hmm. um and anyway at any rate what happened was we started a riot <laughs> because people obviously word got out that we're handing out these free like, like packs of cards. cards. Yeah. No, they didn't even know what I was know. in there. But yeah. because it's a free pack of cards, we were beset upon by a mob of hands grabbing, shoving, pushing. One of the girls that was with us got pushed over and hurt, you know, like it was just insane. Mm. We actually ended up the only way we could stop it was to throw literally whatever we had in our hands, throw it onto the ground. And the crowds just like descended on it. We had to back away from it. Were you afraid you'd be eaten? <laughs> Not eaten, but literally just oh, stampeded wow. to death wow. because we were giving away free uh, poker cards. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was insane. It was the first time I'd ever seen that. But see, I can relate whenever there's something free or a good deal. It's kind of like this mass frenzy takes mm-hmm. a hold of, and it was that same generation was like the sort of fifty year olds. It's always like that. Yeah. And you know, I'm anyway. just I don't know why they mm-hmm. these companies still create these situations. Remember that dude that like threw all the fake uh, money in Shanghai for the club promotion, and yeah. all these people died in the stampede. Like, why are you continuing to use this methodology? Yeah, well, you, probably because no one's held accountable. Yeah, they aren't. No, they're, no, they're never... they usually aren't. Actually, another foreigner that I know was feeling very generous and <laughs> he uh, he had a bunch of like, I can't remember if they were like one R&B notes or something, but he basically like threw them out to a bunch of beggars and <laughs> he just got mobbed. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. They were chasing it's him like down Chinese the road. They literally tried to find him. Uh, like this huge <laughs> mob just running after him. Like for he money. must have more. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's funny. funny. Yeah. yeah, anyway. That reminds um, me of, uh, what is it, Assassin's Creed 2 when you could just, if you just to distract the guards, throw like gold coins and then all the little peasants like, Mamma Mia! (laughs) (laughs) It's something like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, so this is a big thing and uh, we just wanted to show you that it's not just Costco. It happens often and it just happened again this week where, whatever, 16 people were injured. You've got to understand, for people to get... (laughs) Injured because they're going to get something like a 50 cents worth of a free thing. It, it happens all the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's probably it for everything in What's New. So guess what? It's time for a Super Chat question. Hey, you got it. I right. got it this time. Yeah. yeah I remember. All right. What do we got here? Uh, so Mods Jada, our boy, says, uh, 2010, I was in a public market in Peking when some random looking guy was chased down by suits and driven away in a black car. Any idea what this was? I got a little story that might relate to that. One of my first experiences in a Chinese bar 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't actually a Chinese bar. It was like an expat bar. Right. Uh, but there was a bunch of Chinese people. You know how they love to watch soccer, football, yes. and TV? Yeah, yeah. So they're all in there watching soccer. And then all of a sudden, these two guys run inside the bar, yeah. grab one of the random Chinese dudes who was watching soccer with his friends. Mm-hmm. Football. Football. Bring him, bring him outside. <laughs> you know those Toyota Crowns, those yes. like 90s ones? Yeah. They bring him out. They hold his arms behind his back. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And they open up the trunk, and there's a, like a piece of plywood in the back, and everyone's okay. just like staring. Right. Yeah. Everyone stops watching football. Yeah. They put his head down, and they grab a machete, and they hack a piece of his ear off. What? And drive away. Just like they that. They just drove away, and then he he didn't act like he was surprised. <laughs> okay. He just ran off down the street holding. His Guarantee ear. you that's gambling debts. Gambling debts. That's Guaranteed. that was the whole point of my uh, um, story. Yeah, okay. Was that it's guaranteed to be shadow bank debts, yeah. debt collectors. That is a very big problem in China that you, you don't hear about, but gambling is very illegal in China. Mm-hmm. And I mean, look, I hate to say, but it's like a it's it's definitely in the blood of Chinese people. They love gambling. You can try to call me racist for saying that, but it's just true. Every Chinese person that I know loves gambling in one way or another. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest pastimes is mahjong, which yeah. they play, and there has to be money involved. They'll never mm-hmm. do it for you know. There's always like money in those little well, hidden they, drawers. They say. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always in the hidden drawers. We're not you know? gambling. Yeah, no, yeah. we're not gambling. But it is a problem, and that's why gambling is completely illegal in China. Mm. It's to stop people just ruining the lives of their families and stuff for sure it's an addiction for most people uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. in the do you remember the what's it called government subsidized housing right outside my apartment yeah and the rent there was like 300 or 800 RMB per month mm. and a lot of the people that lived there were yeah. either those debt collector dudes like the yeah. thug dudes or they were people that are basically trying to pay off gambling debt because yeah. they can't afford to live anywhere else. It's a big problem. And then they would just gamble in their apartments. Remember sure. the yeah, all, yeah all the time. You know, gambling is a huge issue, and gambling debt is a huge issue too. And mm. you know, you see a lot of trouble arising from that. People committing suicide. You know, all sorts of crap. But of course, social harmony has to be maintained, so it never really makes the news. It's only mm. like I know I know a guy who got into trouble for gambling debts, mm-hmm. a guy that I used to know called Eddie, a Chinese guy, mm-hmm. and they actually locked him in a room. They took his ID card, they took photos of his ID card and all that kind of stuff, and they said, we know where to find you. They phoned his parents and everything. You have to pay by X, Y, Z time. Crazy. You know? The exact same thing happened to my the husband of my student. And oh, she really? acted like it was totally normal. Has that had happened before? They like locked him in a room for five days, and she was like, "Yeah, hopefully he'll be fine." I was like, "What the, what the heck?" Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I forgot how prevalent that so was. So anyway, that that was a pretty good question. Yeah. Um, L- let's uh, do one more because yeah. we got super chats coming in by the truckload. So, okay. uh, and I want to get to this fifty dollar one from our boy Dion Chapman. Dion said early super chat as I will be driving when you're live. Have a great show, guys. Thank you very much, Dion. You are the bomb. Yeah, she said supper chat. Super. No, he said supper. Well, we, I love them. And a supper chat is like when you're eating supper mm-hmm. and you're chatting. But thanks a lot, Dean. We to be fair, if we were it. eating dinner right now, it'd be kind of like a supper chat. <laughs> it would be a supper chat. Thank, Thank you, Dean. But not the last supper chat. Not the last. <laughs> really appreciate it. No, seriously. All right. Um, should we move on to our main segment? Sure. Our main segment, it is, as everybody knows, is soft power hour. And we talk about kind of what China's up to mm-hmm. as far as trying to bend your mind or in down their favor. Or they're down to bend your mind. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by showing a little clip here. And uh, it's black, but it's not for long. Give it a second. I like this part. Yeah, what, well, the black part? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what's happening behind us is a, is a show on CCTV1. And um, the anchor, her name is Dong Qing. Mm-hmm. That's her over there. She's actually very famous. She's hosted the, the Chinese New Year Gala. Mm-hmm. No one knows what that is, by the way. It's like the biggest thing. It's like the Super Bowl. Yeah, okay, it's like the Super Bowl. Yeah, you're right. Like every year, it has to happen around Chinese New Year. Um, She's very famous for being very pretty and stuff, you know. Right, Um, even in her age. Yeah, and everybody looks up to her. She's a mouthpiece for the government, basically. Mm -hmm. And during this show, she basically tells all the children that you must love the party. Mm -hmm. China is the greatest. You must love China. Nothing new here. No, I mean, it's kind of normal. You can see by the patriotic sort of stuff that's going on behind this us. This stuff has ramped up big time. Yeah, though. yeah. This kind I of mean, stuff. look at this kind, of, this kind of thing you didn't see very often. No, it's like really crap comedy usually, like mm. little skits, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's this. Yeah, it's all like China is amazing <clears throat> and great and most powerful nation in the world and all that we stuff. We will respect our military leaders, blah, blah, blah. Take this flag. Uh, yeah, now she knows what it's like to be in the Hitler Youth. Yeah, <laughs> literally <laughs> looks the same, doesn't uh, it? Okay, anyway, the thing is, this... 
um, Anchor. Mm. She has something else to do with Anchor because she has an Anchor baby. <laughs> she does. <laughs> she basically uh, flew to America mm-hmm. and gave birth in America, birth tourism, yeah, and birth then flew tourism. straight back. Mm-hmm. So now she has an American-born child. I think she's a party member. Um, uh, if so not, she must doesn't, be. It doesn't matter. She has mm-hmm. massive party ties. Mm-hmm. And, you know, let's be honest. This is not surprising. Mm-hmm. Anyone with money in China tends to try to get their children out yeah. uh, for green cards. And the funny thing is, she brought her kid back. Yeah, so of course, just they, always the green card. Yeah. they always do. They always do. So mm. it's kind of hypocritical. Not kind of. It's, very, it's hypocr- very hypocritical. It's kind of like somebody saying, uh, I'll only buy American-made products. Meanwhile, all they do is buy Japanese-only made goods. Right. It's, it's absolute crap. It's like, do as I say, not as I do. I think it, it goes further than that because she has influence. Yes, right. she's a she's a media star. So she's parroting this government narrative that we must stay in China. We are Chinese. We'll never leave our country. Blah blah blah. Then what the hell is she doing? Like how 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 does the Chinese government allow such a high profile character to, to be the mouthpiece for that sentiment? Yeah, she's I'm not. Confused. She's actually not the only one. What's her, the other one? Uh, Chai, Chai Jing. Yeah. Chai Jing is also another very famous CCTV uh, mm. anchor and stuff, and she did the exact same thing. Now, there are a couple of reasons why they would do this. Number one is to avoid fines Mm -hmm. uh, due to the one-child policy. Mm -hmm. But that's gone now. So they're allowed to have more than one. So maybe in the past, they would have tried to have their child overseas. Absolutely. It's it's an escape method for their money and for For themselves. Because what what they can do is then they can open up a trust Mm. in the child's name Mm -hmm. because now the child is a U.S. citizen. And then they can funnel money through that. Yep. Okay. And now the child also has access to whatever schooling and, you know, all the things that come with along with the citizenship, right. uh, retirement funds and all that kind of stuff. And mark my words, you know, citizenships come with a certain amount of responsibilities, right? Yeah. An American citizenship, you need to pay tax. Yeah. Okay. But you get a lot out. Right. But you have to pay in the tax. The thing is, with these people, even though they're incredibly rich, like she's incredibly rich, she will not put anything in. She's only going to take out. She will make sure that her child gets whatever kind of free schooling or free this or free that or some kind of a thing that America can provide. But there will be nothing given back at all. Until, and mark my words, Mm -hmm. until the party goes around, which they do often to make examples out of certain high profile figures to show, hey, we're cracking down on corruption and stuff. Meanwhile, yeah. China's never been more corrupt than it is now. Sure, sure. Uh, but what they've done is create this beautiful spectacle of them cracking down on corruption. So mm-hmm. that's also an avenue. Like they have to be really careful. If they're be- if they're being targeted for one of these campaigns, then they they got to get out. They get yeah. out, right? Yeah. You see, super high profile rich people doing that all the time. You know, it it, it really boils my blood because there have been quite a few and we talked about this before like um cases where rich chinese will have their children in canada Mm -hmm. or you know another country and then (laughs) remember that case in canada the guy actually claimed poverty Mm -hmm. and said that he was earning less than a thousand dollars a year or something and started to claim benefits benefits, you know from the government Mm. and uh all that Meanwhile, he bought his uh, daughter like a, whatever, $60,000 Mercedes-Benz brand new. Mm. And he's claiming he only makes a $1,000 a year. Right. You know, it's that kind of thing. I guess Canada's IRS sucks. Yeah, I guess <laughs> Canada's just too welcoming and nice. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah. Take it all. Um, but basically, th- this this boils down to our topic today, which mm-hmm. is China's very willing to, to take, 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 but mm-hmm. not really give back. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, expect the most fair, best treatment, but never treat anyone the same sure and i'd like us to get right into the meat of this right now and just have some comparisons and i thought we've done this a few times but i think it's quite good and we're from a very good point to make comparisons here because you are married to a chinese citizen and i am married to a chinese citizen so we can draw parallels here okay thanks for reminding me just just saying um when you got married what was the deal to bring your wife over to the U.S.? God, do you want me to talk about paperwork? I mean, it was a freaking nightmare. I know it, it's definitely a nightmare, but I want I want us to go through what you managed to achieve. I achieved her green card yes. in the end, right? But mm-hmm. it took about a year. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of paperwork, a lot of interviews, a lot of redoing paperwork, a lot of proving uh, reliable income sources, things right. like this, bank accounts, all this kind of stuff. It was nuts doesn't sound too difficult to me 
But uh, he didn't let me finish. Okay. But in the end, <laughs> right? We'll look it was a bank account. <laughs> it was a process, right? Yes. It was a process, and it was a process that has been well documented. Mm -hmm. It was a process that was at time confusing, at times confusing, but it was a process that does work. Yes. Right. So a after all was said and done, I was satisfied with the outcome because you know there was pretty much guaranteed chance she was going to get it. Yes. And I put in the work to make it happen, and it was okay. okay. And so it took you what about a year? Yeah. Okay. So it took I'll you say eight, eight to ten months. Eight to ten yeah. months. And now she has all the rights of a citizen here. Yes. All right. She can. Well, except for voting. Yeah. Yeah. She can't vote yet, but uh, she can. She can work. She can go work. She mm -hmm. can go get a job tomorrow. Yeah. She could go sell lemonade on the side of the road yeah. if she wanted to, yeah. right? Um, she is protected by the law. Yeah. If she gets into dispute with the local over here, she'll be treated fairly. Yeah. She can go to court. Yeah. yeah. She, she, everything. Hire a lawyer. Everything is open to her. She's not. There are no barriers in her way. She can start a business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Today. Okay. Excellent. She could go buy a house. She could buy a house. Buy buy a car. She could buy a car. Yeah. Okay. So you see what we're getting here is being married in China for uh, many years for the both of us. We could achieve zero. <laughs> no. Zero. And there is no path to mm. to achieving anything. Sure. There is no path. No. So being married means nothing in China if you're no. a foreigner. It's, if, a, it's yeah. debilitating. Yeah. In fact, it, it counts against you yeah. in a lot of ways, you know. So China does not treat the rest of the world like it wants to be treated. Chinese citizens abroad um, enjoy the freedoms of whichever country they go to. When they're not being bullied by the CCP. Yeah. No, of course. <laughs> From but home. What I'm saying is like they, they can actually... Yeah you know, go to America and they can study and then they can work on their student fine. visa. And I'm not saying it's yeah. bad. I'm saying that they can do this. Right. However, if anything happens where um, a Chinese student is stopped at the airport and like, oh, wait, your papers aren't really good. And, you know, what are you doing? And they send them back. All of a sudden, the Chinese government will start to release right. articles saying how unfair America is, how discriminatory mm. America is towards Chinese people. Mm. They send out these massive warning emails and put it in the news. If you are in a, a, a student studying in America, be careful. Americans are now more discriminatory towards Chinese students. They're going to check you. They're going to be all this crap. Right? The worst thing is that like this sometimes works because a lot of Chinese mm. people are very uh, domestic. Mm. They're very provincial, right? So when they actually do leave, their, their guard is up super hardcore. Yeah. Uh, number one, most Chinese people have a very poor command of English. And number two, when they're in a new place surrounded by all these people and they don't see all these Chinese people around them, they all of a sudden feel like the the wild card, the outlier, right? Mm -hmm. So then when they get this domestic news propaganda sent to them, yeah. their guard goes up even higher mm -hmm. and they get super worried. You get to the point where you got kids bringing, Chinese kids bringing bulletproof vests over because they <laughs> yeah. think they're going to get shot. Yeah, you know I know. I mean? Isn't that so ridiculous? So yeah. meanwhile, the rhetoric in the West, the anti-Chinese sentiment is... Media only. It's really not something you'd face in the streets. No. Something my wife said the other day. She just hasn't experienced any anti-Chinese sentiment anywhere she's been in America. Neither, neither has my wife. I even asked her. I've, I've said, has anyone ever been racist to you or tried to say you're Chinese, you this or that? Not right. once. And we go out often, you know. Yeah, my point to wrap this up is mm. that the anti-foreigner sentiment in China does ramp up. Yes. It's very easy to see why. It's a very homogenous country. Mm -hmm. um, people take... The government's word for things. Yeah, they expect the government to be like a big daddy over them, mm -hmm. right? They they worship leadership, right? Um, and they like to be, you know, they like to be feel like society is smooth and controlled, right? Yeah. Everything is going smoothly. Yeah. So they actually do think that America or England or these other countries operate in the same way that China does, and that's always the biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. Is that people in the West have polarized opinions? They're yeah. all over the board. People well, in China yeah. do not. You know, a lot of Chinese people also don't actually know. Yeah. They don't know because a lot of people are subscribers, you know, who are, say, married to or in an, uh, a relationship with a Chinese woman or a mm. Chinese man. Their wife, their Chinese wife will say, oh, just, just come over here and you can teach English. Yeah. Because the, the wife themselves don't know that it's not possible. Sure. Okay. You need to have all the qualifications. You need to have the right kind of visa. You need to have pass all these tests. You have to be a native English speaker, etc. Yeah. There's all these lists. It's a very stringent. Mm. But they're like, no, that's fine. You can just come here because they're used to the way life works for them. They don't realize that foreigners don't share 
the same rights in right. China. In fact, foreigners are prevented from doing anything mm. properly in China. You are not allowed to just just arrive on a tourist visa and buy a piece of land. Mm. Okay, you you can't buy land anyway, but you no, can't no. just buy property. You can't just work. You can't just go to live with your wife and teach English on the side. It's illegal, right? And there is yeah. no way for you to ever become legal. You know, right. it's not possible, not under the spousal visa. If you want to work, it's got nothing to do with being married. Mm. It's a completely separate thing. Can I do a whoop, whoop, yeah. wumao alert? Yeah. I, I, guys, I can, you won't be able to read this because it's grayed out. I just want to read a wumao comment. Okay, go quick. for it. So a wumao paid internet troll. Yes. Um, I've seen this copy pasta multiple times. So this is actually something that's being passed around. Okay. Good luck with this anti-China bullshit. You two scumbags will never be welcomed here again. Every single Chinese will know the ugly things you two have said and done. Um, not impressive because you just copied what I saw over the past week on my video. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a woman. Mm, of course it is. And that's the kind of you know, issue that we're dealing with is that you're not seeing people, the majority of people in the West being radicalized against China, but you are seeing the majority of Chinese people in mainland China being radicalized against the free world. Absolutely. To the point now where like, democracy didn't used to be a swear word when i first moved to china it mm -hmm. was something you could actually kind of talk about sure and they were curious about it people were curious but now it's gotten so bad that democracy to them is not only a swear word but it's something that they despise they've been yes. taught to despise it now yes so well i mean again it's this whole idea of like oh look the foreigners want to make us look bad look at these two scumbags talking bad about china right Okay, well, if you don't want us to talk about reality and these these terrible realities, how about you change the reality in China and actually allow foreigners to be treated equally? Stop treating foreigners like second class citizens and foreign businesses. Have you ever seen an instance where a Chinese company wants to open up a branch in America and they're told if you want to open a branch here, you have to give us your IP, you have mm. to give us your trade secrets. You have to show us the formula of your drink or whatever that you do. Oh, and by the way, mm. a white guy has to own 51% of your company. Yeah, exactly. Imagine and, that. Yeah, it's not, going to, <laughs> it's not going to fly. Chinese people are the most hypocritical people when it comes to this particular kind of argument because they complain and they moan and they go on about how unfairly treated Chinese they are. Chinese nationalists. Yes, nationalists. I, I take it back, not all Chinese people. This is not a racial discussion. No. no. Um, the nationalists from mainland China, okay? But they will all day defend the, the right of China to deny Westerners to work there, to mm. live there, to settle down there, to mm. buy property, to run businesses. They're like, oh, China's not an immigrant nation. China's not this, China's not that. But then why do you expect the rest of the world to treat you in the way that you deny other people? That's the whole point. Right. Mm. And, you know, to expand this more than just the way foreigners are treated in foreign businesses. I think that that hits closer to home for most of our audience. But yeah. stop trying to squash opinions of people in your own goddamn country that are a little bit different than yours. Because Chinese people, I'm, I hate to say this, but are Chinese people with a different opinion than the nationalist rhetoric mm -hmm. get treated worse than foreigners do. Yeah, they They're do. absolutely bullied into submission. Yes. You cannot have a different opinion. And my heart goes out to those people. Yeah. You know? That are it's, trying to make changes. It's unfortunate, but it's actually quite quite easy to see. If you go along with the popular narrative of the Chinese government, and you, if I were to make videos right now talking about like, oh, Hong Kong is bad, and uh, the West is bad, and China is good, and mm. we're just the best, and you know, we're just being unfairly treated. It doesn't matter if I'm a pond scum, no. you know, like criminal. People you could will be, still. You could look like you've just had chemotherapy. Yeah, you could look like Fester a drug addict. Adam, Adams, yeah. and people will be like, "Oh, what a handsome, amazing man!" <laughs> no joke, I mean? like that. No, seriously, because it's easy. It's easy money. It's easy to dupe these nationalists. The the Chinese nationalists mm. are too easy to manipulate and control because they have been manipulated and controlled by the government their whole mm. lives and by society. So as long as you know what to say to them. You win. You know what the most dangerous thing about that type of... I'm seeing a lot of this, by the way, yeah. on YouTube. There's mm -hmm. these uh, guys, these foreigners that have been working for CCTV for a while. Yeah. They use the guise of like travel videos and stuff sure. like this. But they've now been doing these little things about like going to Hong Kong and showing how bad it is now and all this kind of stuff. And these are like foreigners from Western sure, countries, sure. right? I've been seeing a lot of this. And I think there's two symptoms. I think one is that 
people know the writing on the wall. Foreigners know the writing on the wall. A lot of them are leaving. Yeah, the majority. Yeah. And the ones that really don't want to leave think that if they parrot the narrative of the CCP and they really just go out there on social media to say, no, the West is wrong, China's so good, this is all anti-China bullshit. If they have that rhetoric, if they have that narrative, they think they're safe. Yeah, they feel like they're going to be the ones that are The ones that accepted are saved, like, and <laughs> you know, when the helicopters came to pick up the last French people in Saigon, you know what I mean, before yeah. it fell. Um, yeah. Number two, the second thing is that it's, like you said, it's very simple, right? It's mm -hmm. very simple to be successful with this kind of narrative. What we, what we do, yeah. you know, it's not that popular, if you really think about it. For, for numbers sake, right? Yes. Because our audience is English speaking, number one. Yeah. And number two, if even if we had Chinese subtitles or we spoke Chinese, we would literally infuriate a billion people that have been told otherwise sure. when we speak the truth. Yeah. And they can't handle the truth. You can't yeah. handle no, the truth, can't. right? Yeah. So yeah. these guys, they know that they have almost an enslaved audience. And when a foreigner says what the government says, it automatically becomes validated. And this is awful because it actually shows the, 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 the white worship, the foreign yeah, worship. And I hate that. Which is ridiculous because it should be a Chinese person up there mm. saying these things. Yes. You know, with Chinese foreigners. Yeah. Why is it that when a foreigner says something, it's got so much more clout in China? They need to rid... The, I think that's the first thing. They need to rid themselves Stop of that. feeling inferior. Stop right. looking to foreigners as something to follow, you see. Start being yourself. Start finding your own strength, right. you know. And on top of that, start treating people equally like you would like to be treated, mm -hmm. you see. Back to the whole thing. I have... Chinese friends, lifelong Chinese friends, um, from Taiwan mostly, uh, because I find Taiwanese people to be a lot more agreeable than mainland Chinese people. Well, growing up in free yeah. society. Okay. Um, my wife is Chinese. <laughs> She's going to be my lifelong partner. Yeah. I absolutely love her. She's, you know, the light of my life. We're going to have a child together. You know, I've got nothing against Chinese people, and I support them, and I support their causes, if, as long as they're logical, right? And I'm not fair. going to, and <laughs> fair. But at the same time, I don't see the love coming back. No. I no. see China as a whole looking to see how it can take advantage of other countries. Mm -hmm. I see this in Africa, big time, with the way that uh, Africa is being absolutely yeah. destroyed Nature. by China right now. Absolutely. And people can bang on about, yeah, the West did it, and the colonialism and stuff. Sure. That was wrong. That was in the past. Nobody could do anything about it. There wasn't the internet. We couldn't talk about it. Nobody mm. was really aware. You know, if you're sitting in, I don't know, Constantinople or something, you're <laughs> not. Too. Yeah, you're, you're not going to, you know, see what's going on in the the, the Congo. You might mm. receive a carrier pigeon telegram or something that says, sure. you know, oh, we've seen some hard days. You know something like that. But now we can actually see rivers being destroyed, mm. animals being becoming extinct, forests being cut down, you know, all this crap going on. And yet people just seem to stand back, you know? China expects, oh, you did it, we can do it now. Yeah. We can do it. We're going to take it. No one's going to do anything about yeah. it because they're afraid to be called racist basically. Yeah, absolutely. They're pushing that narrative now. Not me. You see, um, being South African, it doesn't matter what I do, people will call me racist and say that I have some kind of invisible privilege which, mm. you know, um, invalidates my opinion somehow. Which is kind of stupid because if someone took a shit in this room right now and... Uh, that was me, by the way. Sorry. Okay. Apologize. And you smelled the shit and you said, hey, I smell shit. Mm. It doesn't matter where you're from. Mm. It doesn't matter if you're a freaking space alien mm. or if you're a dog or if you're... It doesn't matter what you're from. If you say, I smell shit, I can't say, haha, but you're Puerto Rican, so you wouldn't know what sh shit smells like. Mm. Or, ah, ha, ha, you come from Australia, so you wouldn't know what shit smells like because you, I don't know, have wallabies over there. It doesn't <laughs> matter. If someone smells shit and they say it smells like shit. It's shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. You've got to take that whole... Oh, this guy, you can't listen to his opinion because he's South African. That's actually ridiculous. You can actually listen to my opinion more because I've got a lot more experience with this stuff, to be honest. So anyway, back to the whole point is um, China 100% at the moment expects the best treatment but gives the worst treatment. Mm. Look at the journalists that are being kicked out. Let's play our next little clip here. Um, yeah. Some journalist reported that uh, Xi Jinping's cousin 
was living the high life mm. and had like all these investments and all this money and all this kind of stuff. I'm surprised. Yeah. Okay, because all the Communist Party officials do have... They're worth billions. Yeah, they they have all this money that's outside of the country uh-huh. and all that. So somebody reported on that. And guess what? The visa was denied. Journalist visa was stripped, was not allowed to enter the country because uh-huh. they'd written that one article talking about the president's cousin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how about all the Chinese journalists that come to America that have written something about Trump or written something about Hillary or written something about anything that might be offensive to the leaders here in the country. Do you think... Oh, wait, what's that? Yeah. Oh, they're all still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not only are they all still here, they're given, you know, journalist privilege and press pass and all that stuff and allowed everywhere, just like a journalist would be. Mm-hmm. You know, I do think it's time for the world to wake up, okay, and see what's going on here. Now... Don't get me wrong here. I don't want the world to suddenly start doing, uh, you know, there to be reprisals and saying, oh, you're Chinese. You're not allowed to work here if you're married. Oh, you're Chinese. You're not allowed to own a house. You're Chinese. You're not allowed to get a driver's license unless you meet this billion criteria, you know. Oh, you're Chinese. You're you're a student here. You're not allowed to work, you know, Mm. all this crap. Oh, you're Chinese. You're not allowed to take your money out of the country. That's another big thing. (laughs) Foreigners that invest in China and and bring money to China, getting money out. The amount of emails I get every day asking for help. You can't get your money out. So hard. And if you're a foreigner, you're not allowed to change Chinese currency into US dollars Mm. in a bank. You're not Mm. allowed to do it. There's all these things. You used to be able to. So, yeah, you used to be able to. They changed that. But basically what I'm trying to say is I don't want reprisals in that form. Mm -mm. But what I want is I want people to start calling them out. Sure. Be like, what the hell are you talking about? Next time they say, oh, you know, we're being treated badly. We're being discriminated against. Say, bullshit. You guys are the biggest discriminators in the world. Mm. You know? So you want to call people racist? Chinese people are incredibly racist. I did a video about Mm. that. It's good to go and watch. If you can read Chinese and you go on the Chinese internet, it's very easy to see. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to wake up. I'm talking to the world now. Wake up. Thanks. Stop. Just stop <laughs> believing all this crap and start seeing it for what it is. If you're a company looking to invest in China, I'm going to tell you right now that it's a huge mistake mm. because it's not like investing anywhere else. You will not be protected by the law. They can come up with any old charge and basically arrest all of your staff if they want to. They can seize everything that you have. They can prevent your money from going out. They can take all of your IP and you will not have the law to protect you. There is no rule of law if you're a foreigner there. I'm scared. (laughs) Winston, you're making me uncomfortable. No, seriously. No, but uh, honestly, I think that would be real advice a few years ago when when China was in a position to take foreign businesses and to take that investment. Now, if you go on any news outlet, everyone knows that's a very poor decision. Yeah. You know, yeah. India, Vietnam, that's where it's at right now. Yeah. I understand um, that uh, greedy corporations would do anything to, you know, get a hold of China's cheap labor, mm-hmm. but not only cheap, skilled. Mm. Chinese people are very skilled mm-hmm. and uh, there's a high level of education and even menial laborers are very capable of doing good things. And that's why it's been such a, you know, Hot spot. attractive mm-hmm. place to invest and to open businesses and stuff. But China would be such an amazing country if it wasn't led by an absolute, completely nonsensical dictatorship. Yeah. Not even joking. Skilled populace, mm. you know, big I, population. I would like to take um, us as an example here. Okay. When I moved to China, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for when you moved to China, mm-hmm. we had uh, great expectations for the country. Yeah. Uh, I saw it as an adventure. Mm-hmm. I found a kinship with the people. Mm-hmm. I found that I loved the country. Mm-hmm. I loved the way it ran. I loved the the culture, the friendliness, the hospitality, the way people interact with each other. And I was very set on staying there long term, perhaps forever. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any ideas. But this unfair treatment from the Chinese government and society there, and the way it's ramped up recently and gotten mm-hmm. a lot worse, soured me on the Mm -hmm. whole thing yeah me too don't you think it would have been much better if they would treat people that are actually invested in china correctly yes and not turn around and say oh sorry we've just decided that anyone who's not a non-native speaker is not allowed to teach english anymore and Mm -hmm. let's just say uh your country was on a list that was a native speaking country and they say sorry your country's no longer a native you know speaker country we're not going to renew your visa. You've mm-hmm. been there for 
12, 13, 14 years, mm -hmm. doing your thing, teaching English, renewing your visa. You've got a, a family there. You've got children there. Uh, you're running a, a school, you know? Yeah. You're doing all this stuff. This is not me personally. This is someone I know. Um, South Africans actually, I, I do believe they did take it off the native speaker. Mm. It used to be, but not anymore. Um, what do you do, man? You've put so much of your life. You've put so much money into the country. You've invested. You've run a school. You've started a business. You've opened a restaurant. You have all your social circles of friends. Someone like me who's built a YouTube channel showing people how cool China is and how interesting it is. You know, someone like you who invested heavily, had children there, you know, bought a nice big apartment, set up a school, all this. We've put so much into the country. Now, you would think that people like us who have that much drive and that much passion and that much love for China should actually be positive about China, right? Things have changed. Yeah, things the have changed. The bones of a good society are there. Yeah. It's just under very poor leadership. That uses foreigners and people with different opin opinions, Chinese people, the, vi the real victims here, yeah. use them for their own narrative and for their own personal political and monetary gain. Absolutely. It's terrible. It's poison. So you see, the, the actual society, and I think this message goes through all of our videos. The reason we were attracted to China in the first place is that the people there and the way everyday society runs is good, mm. okay? But it's the, the absolute batshit crazy policies of the government which change all the time, okay, and are incredibly insulting mm -hmm. and discriminatory towards foreigners. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just unacceptable. If I look at my Chinese counterparts who decided that they wanted to marry an American, for instance, like your wife, for instance, I see how successful they've become at mm -hmm. integrating into societies mm -hmm. overseas because other countries are just quite frankly better mm -hmm. and more open minded when it comes to dealing with foreigners. Of course. You know, if you see someone's gotten married and they want to settle down, they want to have a family, they want to contribute to the country, they're starting a business, all of that. Surely it's in your best interest to allow them to do that mm -hmm. and to make the process something that's actually achievable and obtainable. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they would then go ahead and say how good it is. And, you know, we would have a completely different opinion of what's going on there's in China. There's just no incentive for that. For, no. There's literally no incentive for the Chinese government to do that. They want yeah. domestic control. That's it. Yeah. They want to continue the party leadership and legacy. That's correct. And so they, we don't matter. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't give a crap about foreigners. Mm. And I think... That's something that most foreigners realize after a while. Mm. And um, any foreigner that goes to mm. China will have a positive outlook in the beginning because it is, it's a fantastic place. It's such it's a true. lot of fun. It's so much, you know, it's so interesting and different. But anyone who's been there long term will start to get disappointed. They'll start to realize that China actually is very unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese government doesn't care about foreigners and and will treat foreigners as an enemy somewhere down the line whenever mm. it's you know convenient to be fair the chinese government doesn't care about its own populace either no so. they don't care about their own people their either. fodder yeah they i mean they, they pretend they do of through course. All that nonsense because that's how they control everyone but they don't and uh it's it's disheartening and mm. uh it's it's just such a it's it's almost criminal mm. you know the way that they blame the west and other countries for treating them unfairly yeah Anyway, let's uh, end this segment mm -hmm. with some Super Chat questions. Man, we got it. This is like heavy. It's the Winston <laughs> show today. <laughs> it's good stuff, though. Uh, so, Sand Dragon says, How hard is it for an Arab to date a Chinese girl? Will I be rejected because of the, color, the brown color of my skin? I know that Asian girls prefer white skin. I mean, this is a... It, it sounds like you already know someone. If she's already accepted you, then congratulations. I mean, it is going to be harder. It's if hard. you're in China, um, you it's will hard. be discriminated against by yes. this, your skin color. You will find a girl that doesn't care. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we've, we've got a friend who's Iran half Iranian. Um, yeah. He looks very Arabic, his features. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's gotten married. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, <laughs> remember, like, we were sitting in your house and your father-in-law walked in and he said, Ah, ISIS. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and, he, so, and he laughed. Yeah, and yeah, laughed. That was at a it. good joke. Yeah, you've got to understand yeah. that. You got to understand China. Yeah, you got to understand China. <laughs> Seriously, though, in China, discrimination is just out in the open, mm. and it's very, very don't, much. Don't don't take it personally. Yeah, you can't take it personally. No. You know, because. 
people... It is, it is not malicious. No, it's not malicious. But if you get hurt by people calling you a terrorist just because you look Arabic, mm. um, then you might not like it too much there. But... He's Persian, by the way. Well, Iranian, Persian mm -hmm. um, is very different. It's not the same. But, no. you know, the thing is... Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> it's um, coming in in all the comments. <laughs> well, okay. It doesn't yeah. matter. Anyway, yeah. It doesn't matter. My to my father-in-law. My, yeah. my, my meaning is, is that he looks Arabic. Sure. And so, you know, he's got the features, mm. handsome features, mm. all right? And you will find that, uh, you know, you will be exotic to Chinese women and they will go for that. I A actually them, know, yeah. I know some proper like Arabic guys there. I know some Turkish guys. Mm -hmm. I know some. I know a guy from Iraq who's there, mm -hmm. who's got a very successful relationship. You know, I know. In fact, the people that have it the worst are the black people there mm -hmm. when it comes to discrimination. But I have a lot of black friends in China who have successful yeah. relationships and marriages. So as long as you're willing to brush off the ignorance mm -hmm. and the discrimination, you know, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, follow up question, I guess. Does would you say that being like a practicing Muslim would make it worse or do they just like it's all in the same pot? If you already look that way, you're going to be treated a certain way regardless. Yes, the latter. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you practice or not. Just also remember that any kind of uh, religious practices is, is probably a very bad thing to do out in the open in mm. China, mm. Um, especially with the current situation in Xinjiang, you know, the, the concentration camps and stuff. Yeah, they can make an they, example out of you. They, they might just because... There's a very, so you're radicalizing yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. There's a massive anti-Muslim thing going well, on. Well, they've been arresting piece of people from Kazakhstan as well and just yeah. trying them like Chinese citizens sure. you know, in the border regions. So. Yeah, so just don't do any kind of public religious practice. That goes for Christians too. Mm -hmm. You know, There are rules that you have to follow in China if you want to do religion, and it's quite stringent. So you know, like if you go to a church, they're very controlled, and you have to show your passport to get into the door, and there's mm. all sorts of funny things you have to do. Um, so just I would caution against practicing religion out in the open in China. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to do another question. Yeah, sure. yeah, let's do one more. Sweet. So Massive Fins, he asks, uh, is it advisable to wear a Trump sucks shirt or pretend to be Aussie if I'm going to China? Nah, doesn't matter. <laughs> no one's you know, going to be able to read it. No. I Maybe mean, look, I, Chinese. I personally, I, I feel like having any kind of political statement on a T-shirt is it's always a stupid trouble. thing to do. You know, you see someone with a bumper sticker that says, you know, uh, what kills more, guns or abortion? You know, mm -hmm. I saw that today and I was like, <laughs> dude, you know, it's just it colors your perception of him. You're you not know? changing anyone's mind. It, the, the person behind you is either going to want to come up next to you and give you a high five right, or, or like you. Flip, you, flip the bird. Right. But if you didn't have that sticker there in the first place... You know, people to be more, a little bit more like happy. You know what I mean? Sure. So I think any kind of political slogan is kind of a stupid thing. Uh, if if you were wearing a uh, pro Xi Jinping shirt in China, you could still get in trouble. What happens is like yeah. even the most fervent nationalists. This is where, yeah. talking about Chinese people are fodder to the government. Yeah. When they decide something's bad, even if it was good previously, yeah, you can get wrapped up in, under that blanket. You can now be demonized for that, even if it looks like you're supporting it. You yeah, know? wasn't the the youth Marxist League or something in that they university? They were arrested. They were all arrested for getting being, to... <laughs> being too pro communist. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So, yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Well, what do we got next? Let's have one more question before the next section. Sure. Cool. Cool. So, our good pal Cesario JPN, twenty dollars. Thank you. Said uh, Winston reminded me of this. You had Chinese grabbing free food meant for the homeless and dumping the unwanted food in the trash and elsewhere in the Bay Area. One of the local TV stations, KRON4, did annual filming of this. Annual filming. Yeah, that, that is a real thing. And mm. that is something that makes me very upset. Is you do see um, when Chinese people come here, they bring their families with them, mm. right? And, you know, it's not like... I feel like it's not malicious, but they probably got word mm. that there's free food. Mm -hmm. If you go there, you can get free food from yeah. this fridge or whatever. Right. They don't understand English. It's probably like the mother-in-law or something or right. like the grandmothers and stuff that they bought over. Those are the same people that are digging through the trash for mm -hmm. cans, which they're not poor. They don't need to do that. They just do that because they've got a lot of spare time and they want to do that. If someone has the money to bring their family over from China here, they certainly don't need to rely on grandma no. digging for cans in the garbage. But, but it's free. It's free and it's something for them to do in their spare time. And so they go out and they do it. And uh, I'd like to say that it's ignorance, but at the same time, it's appalling. It's yeah. absolutely appalling. And that's why I do implore all my Chinese friends 
And anyone, by the way, who's married a Chinese woman or a Chinese man, if you bring your extended family, like your in-laws over here, teach them the rules. Because it's something that it's hard to get by, you know, like just just a very innocent thing I, I would like to um, put out there is when when my wife first moved here, I had to tell her that, you know, it's not normal for people to hang their clothes to dry on the balcony of an apartment here. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody does in China because mm-hmm. they believe it's more healthy, you know, the sunshine. She wouldn't believe me. We had an argument about it. But, you know, I actually had to show her like warning letters that people have received and that you can't do that because... You know, it sullies the neighborhood and people don't want to see your underwear hanging mm-hmm. up there and stuff. Well, some people. Um, some people, yeah. But, you know, the whole thing is, is like, it's just because in China, people just get on with what they're doing. They're sure. used to doing what they do. They don't get challenged mm. ever. Mm. Nobody challenges anyone. So they just do what they do. So you need to sit them down and, and tell them certain societal norms that they should stick to over here. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of make, it, make sure that these kind of embarrassing situations uh, don't arise, basically. Cool. So, Guanxi Corner. That's it, Guanxi Corner. We love Guanxi Corner, where we get to answer something to do with relationships. So, uh, hit it. What do we got? Alrighty. So, hey guys, my name's Shane from Ireland, and I've been re- I have recently started teaching English in Beijing. Um, I'm often approached by random people wanting to practice their English. Should I treat this as a scam, or should I trust the fact that they might genuinely want to practice English? Thanks. I'm new to all of this, and I'm still a little scared. I've been talking so much. How about you tackle this one? Oh, you recognize that. Yeah, I do. I thought this was your show. I was about to retire. <laughs> it's totally your fault. You come in here with this, I'm too tired with insomnia. I'm not gonna... I can still talk. I'm not what? disabled. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> well, you need to give me a chance. Okay, let's do it. Um, if people are going to approach you, this happens in big cities. We're talking Shanghai, Beijing. Not so much in Shenzhen. Uh, mm. Guangzhou, definitely. <laughs> Uh, Any place where there's a lot of foreign tourists or foreigners living there, you'll get a lot of people that will approach you, usually university age, that will ask you if they can practice their English, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I would say this. It's probably innocent if you're on a train or a bus or something like this where it's just happen chance. You know, you meet someone. You, they want to, you know, learn, tell, tell you what they learned at EF from their foreign sure. teacher or whatever. You know, practice in real life. Or a crazy English. Yes. They'll run up to you and be like, I'm learning crazy English with Li Yang. And they told me I need to talk to everybody. And they don't let you speak back. It's kind of like me today. Kind of like you yeah. today. You're like you. You must have joined. I studied Liang's, Liang's crazy English. Hopefully, yeah. you don't beat your wife as well. <laughs> no. uh, anyway, uh, then you have the other type. If you're in a tourist destination, a tourist area, mm. I would be erring on the side of caution. Let's say you're at the Forbidden City or you're in Pudong, right, in uh, Shanghai. If somebody, especially a, a pretty young woman, is going to approach you and say, "Hey, w- can we practice English?" and their English is quite poor usually, yeah, um, I would be very cautious. They're not going to rob you or something like this, but they're going to try to weasel you into a situation where you're buying something, a tea ceremony, a piece of artwork. The most common one in Beijing is uh, these art students trying to sell you art. Can I practice English with you? By the way, I'm a struggling art student. Can you buy my you know, shit painting? Of you know, they shit. take you to an apartment. Or an apartment. I, actually, I'm going to interject and talk again. Of, but of I'll course. let you finish off. But no, I, no. So I'm saying yeah. if you're in an everyday situation, mm. third tier city, yeah. not in somewhere that's a tourist area, it's totally fine. Yeah, I agree with you. And I have a couple of videos all about the scams. Mm. In fact, I scam baited. I went to Beijing mm. and dressed like a ridiculous looking I'm tourist. I'm sure everyone's seen that. And uh, yeah, I actually followed them to the tea house. And it, it's quite bad. They do try to get you into a situation where you're in their controlled space, mm. where you can't escape and you're in a foreign land. You can't speak the, the language and you get scammed for big money. You know, people mm. get taken for a lot of money in those places. So yeah. stay away, stay yeah. away. Um, I think the easiest way to always get away from this and see if they're genuine or not, if they do want to practice English with you, don't follow them to anywhere that they suggest. If they want to go have a coffee or something, say, okay, let's go to that Starbucks over there. And if they keep insisting to go elsewhere, then just leave them. Just walk away. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. What do we got uh, for Super Chats? All right. Well, as Winston would pronounce it, Tomato Gal (laughs) says, love your podcast. Keep up the great work. What exactly is a sea milk? Oh, Lord. Well, it's me, really. Uh, uh, sea milk. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say uh. No. Uh, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'll do a super condensed yes. version. <laughs> nice. Um, I was helping my friend Jason. You know Jason, big Mongolian rapper dude. We were doing some rapping stuff together in Inner Mongolia. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun. 
Uh, but you took a liking to that. You thought that was absolutely hilarious that I was yeah. a wet white rapper in China. Yeah. I have it all documented on YouTube, guys, so yes. I'm not hiding anything. Yeah. Basically, at my wedding, he realized that Winston likes to give nicknames, mm -hmm. and I think it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he was talking to my table. I had a few foreign friends there amongst the 300 like government cadres around us. Yeah. And uh, he's like, you know what? This is ridiculous. He's a white rapper in China. He doesn't even have a nickname. Mm -hmm. So they're going around the table. We talked to our black friend. He was like, milk is white, right? Yeah, I was like, come on. And Vanilla ice like, is taken. Vanilla ice is taken, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So he was like, what's like milk, but even more white? And he's like, condensed milk. Yeah, I was milk. like, condensed milk, sea milk. He walked around the whole <laughs> wedding, like whenever I had to cheers all the tables with all the guests. And he was telling them, cheers, sea milk, congratulations, sea milk. And I was like, what the hell are these people talking about? I thought they were saying yeah. semen. Yeah, I was, I was instructing all of the tables, like, hey, when he comes to cheers you, yeah. say cheers, sea milk. Yeah. And so, yeah, it kind of started there and it ended. And, it, and, and now everyone calls me that. It's, it's like, yeah. my real name is Matt, and I feel weird when people call me Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gotten to that point. Yeah, sea milk's it's awesome. branding. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> totally. It was, you should have been there. Stay tuned for my new show, Dr. Milk. Oh, yeah. It also really works really well for like chairman milk. There's lots yeah. of play on words. Also, you guys gotta stop seating me here in this like sun. Air. By the end of the video, I'm always a fried egg roll over here. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll figure it out. It's all good. Um, so, is that time for worldview, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's hit worldview. So, worldview, we talk about things that are happening in the world, usually uh, related to China. Now, uh, I <laughs> we don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We've had this discussion every time. Okay. We're probably just going to roll the clip. And you know what? I, I think you should talk a little more this time around. Because you're good with I news. No, listen. Yeah? I want to, and I'm happy to. I, I've actually enjoyed listening to your commentary. I agree with most. That's why we work together. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be told to talk. Okay, It's fine. my free will. What are you, Chinese? <laughs> exactly. What are you, freaking communist? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely Chairman, right. I'm trying to Chairman demonstrate Sturzel. to our audience what's going on in china right now so i'm trying to you know oh by the way channel. people are whining in the comments saying stop put out putting out cigarettes on your hand <laughs> this is actually from our new show which yes. includes dr milk i was using a clipboard oh, we can't wait to show you what we've got up yeah, uh, got in store fun. for you guys but yeah uh, okay world view it yep this one right what is, what is yeah, this just about keep, just keep playing let it go past that it'll hit the next uh clip that's still talking about i the, just see words the the whole um, reporter oh, issue. Oh, right, right, right. I already covered that. Oh, I like this part. Yeah, this is my favorite. There we go. Oh, yeah, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Go. This is this is not the onion. Hashtag not the onion. <laughs> yes, it's You not. may think this is an onion article, but it is not. Mm. Do you remember when the Chinese government took the onion article seriously about the sexiest man in the world being Kim Jong Un? Yes. And they ran it in state media. I remember that, yeah. That was amazing. Anyway, this is not the onion, believe it or not. Yeah. There is a group of government funded scholars mm. in China course government funded yes. it's a government yeah. directive uh, studying linguistics doing published papers yeah and they concluded that Chinese actually is the main umbrella language okay and English is just a dialect of that I think they also said French and German and all yes. that too right? English is the most important though because that's what we're speaking now okay right, right. Um, they literally said that Chinese owns English and they've done this with pretty much everything. They've mm -hmm. done this with like the invention of paper, fireworks, all this kind of stuff. It's hard to, to know where all this stuff really came from, but it goes so far. I never thought it would go past the point where they said they found the first human in China. Yeah. I thought that's where they're going to stop. Sure. Where they're like, no, we don't believe in creationism like Christians. And we do believe in evolution, but everything started here in China. <laughs> yeah. right? I thought that's where the ceiling was. But now, apparently, dude... Yeah. We speak two dialects of Chinese. <laughs> yeah, apparently. English and Mandarin. Mm. So, so does that mean does that mean that the Opium Wars was China invading itself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, it come came full circle. Oh my god. It's just it's so ridiculous this uh what would you call it? Han chauvinism? Yes. Um That's how society runs. It's, Han chauvinism. Yeah, it's, it's not narcissistic. It it's ridiculous. It's like me, me, me. It's mm. all about me. Everything is all about us. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, it's when you don't have any legitimate achievements other yeah. than putting your own populace in poverty and then bringing them back out of it, right? Yeah. You know, I had a I I actually wanted to address this because in my most recent video uh, I pointed out the fact that everybody praises China for bringing everybody out of poverty, but it's the communist government that put them in poverty in the first place. Yeah, sure. A lot of people are like, oh, everyone was poor before the war, because of the war and stuff, before the CCP. Yes, that's true. There was strife and all that. Oh, oh so 90 million people died in that time? I don't think so. No, 
But what I want to point out is if you look at the nationalist government that fled to Taiwan, mm. they prospered and grew and became incredibly successful. Mm. Whereas during the same time period, there was famine, starvation, terrible things that like all those things that wiped out Chinese culture, um, death and, you know, persecution and all this crap mm. at the exact same time under the, the CCP mm. in mainland China. So, yes, the CCP did end up resulting in driving everybody into poverty and starvation and death and terrible, terrible, um, you know, sort of things mm -hmm. for, during that time. And then they decided to lift everybody out of it eventually went with the help of the West. Of I was course. just about to say that. I mean, like if they didn't allow Western investment into China, where where would we be now? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, you can see this kind of batshit crazy tabloid esque, literally insane propaganda coming out of China because there is very few, very few actual modern day achievements. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. From China. Yeah. So that's that's the be all and end all of that. Yeah, okay, let's continue on. Not not that I don't think China can achieve a lot, you know, just yeah, I just wish that they would be more honest about They're know. pretty good at like sending thirty train cars empty to Europe. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Let's, <laughs> Sorry. Let's see next. I'm getting bitter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Should I just keep playing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah what's going on? Through. It's 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 coming. Oh, our okay. next little our next little clip. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Oh, now, hold on. I'll let you talk about this. Okay. Yeah. I think I will because <laughs> I happen to know where this where this actually mm. went down. Mm. Do I need to turn this? Do I need to turn this car around? <laughs> yes, we're actually in a moving vehicle. Yeah. Um, okay. So a while ago, we actually did a video about this where we went and visited a, a real estate place where mm. the buildings were just crumbling in front of us, right? Yeah. yeah. And of course, we get a lot of backlash. People saying, "Oh, you're just trying to find, you know, this blah blah blah, whatever." It's a load of crap. The construction uh, quality in China is not very good, okay? The reason why the buildings stay up and the reason why the buildings don't all collapse is because of the structure, the way it's designed. It's basically a concrete... Um, shell. It's, yeah, it's a concrete shell structure with cladding on top. We've talked about this before, right? And that's a very sturdy design. It's mm. very hard to you know bring down. So you can basically build it very badly and very poorly and it will still withstand sure. 10, 20, 30, yeah. 40 years. It'll still go. It's totally fine. The thing is, this is a new six-story building that was constructed in Shenzhen which just fell down again. Mm. Luckily, everybody managed to escape because mm. they all noticed. You can run the clip in the background because you'll see some footage there. But you know, this is not some rural backwater, right? No. This is... Um, it's in the richest city. Yeah, it is. It It's basically the richest city you know they always say maybe shanghai maybe whatever, shenzhen but whatever but this is in shenzhen um and it's just been put up and it's just collapsed like a short while after yeah this by the way is the kind of low-income housing that they end up putting the this displaced people into you know these you've seen them you've lived oh, yeah. in, i've lived in one of those yeah they don't have elevators in them those are the ones with the stairs usually six seven stories high uh, they build them ver very rapidly, and when they sort of uh, move people off their farmland or what have you, they take them and put them into these kind of yeah, subsidized our shop is in one of those. yeah housing. That's where our uh, Churchill Customer right? Shop was. Yeah, but as you can see, the the thing just collapsed. Um, so yeah, it's still a thing. Houses are still falling down in China, and, and these are uh, just the ones that the the information gets leaked successfully. I mean, look, my you, lord, you cannot hide that because it's no. Shenzhen. That's on a main. No road in law who would look but we like know how me. it is in the third tier places or fifth tier places on the country yeah. it's even worse yeah, yeah it's sure. insane so yeah it is still an issue mm. um so we just thought we'd uh point that out anyway we've been rather cheery today what do you say yeah it's been sorry a I'm, I'm not in the greatest of moods i love you guys though, and i'm happy to talk to you yeah um, um, should we do some questions we should before we do um well let's move Ooh, on to the premature questions. Okay. No, it's totally fine i just i just wanted to put this out there again that um in order for problems to be solved, we need to talk about them, mm -hmm. okay? If you're sitting in the house and someone's turned the, the heat on and you're, you're dying of heat in the house and you're sweating, but you don't talk about it mm. and uh, you say, oh, it's really hot in Africa or something like that, it's not going to fix the fact that you're sitting sweating in the house. You mean me, like me right over here right now? <laughs> yeah, but it's think, not in Africa. I think I DM. subliminally picked that up for this, <laughs> this analogy. But the fact of the matter is, 
is that you have to talk about these problems, especially when you care about a place. Let's just say I didn't care about your house. And I was like, well, then I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to talk about the fact that it's like an oven in there. Mm-hmm. And just went and go, sat in an air-conditioned environment somewhere else and didn't care. It would be fine. But I do For care sure. about your house. I do care about China. So I like to talk about these topics. We like to talk about mm-hmm. these topics because we have vested interest and we care about it. And we feel like the only way that you can fix these things is to talk about it. Yeah, and it's something that Chinese people don't have the right to do. So at least yeah. we can be a, yeah. somewhat of a voice. Yeah, we, we can talk about it. Chinese people do talk about it in amongst themselves, mm. but they won't do it publicly. They no. won't be going out and saying, wow, it's really hot in that house. They'll be like, hey, it's real hot in the house, man. And then if, uh, real hot if a foreigner house. says, hey, it's hot in that house, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, you. screw you. It's hotter in your house. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. We have like five segments for this show, right? Mm-hmm. You should have like analogy hour. Yeah, we should actually. You've uh, had I like should, 10 yeah. analogies. Yeah, sorry about that. It's I'm okay. An, I enjoy your analogies. I'm an analogous person today. Um, Analogous. And yeah, let's let's just <laughs> let's go to the questions, okay? All right, what do we got? All right, first up, real quick, before I get to the super chats, from the from the chat, Gen after next tactic said, "Ask Sea Milk how he got such big calves. No mm. homo." Mm. No, I I get this a lot, you know. Um, I was a swimmer, a competitive swimmer since I was five, uh, and also I raced mountain bikes. And I was just born with massive fucking calves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got uh, Jeffrey Moon says, uh, "Seen this on a cruise ship, on all you can eat buffets, seafood." A uh, mob of people from China fighting over it. Mm, yeah, I you know it, it is a, it's a, it's a fact. It's terrible because I feel embarrassed when mm-hmm. I see that. I feel embarrassed for my Chinese friends. I feel embarrassed for my wife. I feel ba- embarrassed for everyone because they do represent China. Why do we carry the shame on our shoulders? You know, no, seriously, like. Because I know my wife doesn't behave that way. No, I feel super embarrassed because I feel like I do represent China in some way, shape, shape or form. Mm-hmm. So when I see that kind of behavior, I feel like it's one of my own doing that, right? Yeah. And it's massive loss of face. Huge yeah. loss, but they don't care. No, they don't care. That gen- It's usually that specific generation. Yeah. And it's the, the people that know what starvation is all about. Mm. So now they'll just eat until there's nothing left in the world. And then stuff all the shrimp in their pockets. Yeah, it's it's despicable. Teach yeah. your teach your relatives not to do that. It's up to you. If you're a younger Chinese person, it's kind of like if you've got a, a, a dodgy racist <laughs> old go. grandpa. <laughs> if you've got a dodgy racist old grandpa, you've got to tell him, "Hey, listen, grandpa, you can't say that anymore." Grandpa Ralph, you got to stop. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, you, Ralph. it's the same. So if you've got one of these horrible grab 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 mm-hmm. hags, you know, as your grandmother or your mother or something. Tell them stop. Grab eggs. Yeah, yeah, what else would you call them, right? I'm <laughs> sorry, but like, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> Jesus. Winston, with all his analogies, Winston yeah. reminds me of, you know, like in Family Guy, uh, their whole humor is like, oh, this is just like that one time when yeah. Stevie Wonder punched me in the face or something, and right. then they cut to some ridiculous clip. It's the same. Yeah. Okay, I've never watched, I've never watched Family Guy. Yeah, it's because you're 70. Yeah. I, I was also going to say, I think, I'm pretty sure that uh, like Europeans have Literally, our genes, the reason we get fat is because of, like, we were supposed, back in the Ice Age, we would stuff ourselves during springtime or something and then just store it all mm-hmm. and so for later. So it's kind of a similar thing. We were almost like the original uh, generation of... Grab hags. Yeah, exactly. Grab hags. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Big Tex with the freaking Hank Hill uh, avatar. <laughs> nice. Says, I predict China will cave in with an abject face-losing surrender to Trump in the trade war. What do you guys think? Yeah. Uh, it won't be it won't be portrayed no. as that to the populace. They think they're winning by a landslide. No, um, China is very going to be very defiant till yeah. the end here, and they're going to. I mean, it's just the way China works. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, they they will trumpet and say, "Hey, you know, like trumpet." <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like Joshua Wong, who's the yeah. the head of the pro democracy mm-hmm. sort of. Um, protests and mm-hmm. stuff went to germany to meet with them and talk about it right so what did the foreign secretaries of china say germany has insulted the yeah. sovereignty of It'll china by to talking to this guy because you know they can't accept another nope. opinion they will jump up and down and scream fire and brimstone yeah. until the end you're so. just going to see more like anti-foreign propaganda over and over again saying we're doing fine prepare for a long arduous march and then they'll decouple from the rest of the world yeah, it's it, like that every time. Or they'll do some kind of backdoor deal that nobody knows about and just keep doing their thing. Yeah. You know what they'll do is they'll just start labeling their products 
made in Malaysia instead of made in China. Well, they do that with Vietnam already. Yeah, kind of ship it through Malaysia or something yeah. to get rid of the tariffs. So they'll just they'll do that. Piss them off. Yeah. Anyway. All right, Dadon, ten dollars. Thank you very much. Just an update to my message from last time. My girlfriend didn't get on the plane and is still here. Still not sure if it's permanent though. Frowny face. Best of luck, man. Yeah. Thanks for keeping in touch yeah, about that. Just, just keep fighting and like anything, if if she's worth fighting for, um, and if she put thinks your, you're worth fighting for, it'll work out. Yeah, put on put on your, your armor. Mm. Get your knight sword out. Don't go into battle without armor. And that was a uh, Another anti-pregnancy analogy. PSA. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Beautiful. All right. Uh, you guys are going to be the next, like, you know, those Trojan Man commercials? That'll yeah. be you. Uh, all right. Me, me Mihaela90. Uh, I'm going to a concert in Shenzhen in November, and I booked flights to Hong Kong and was planning to get the VOA visa on arrival. Mm-hmm. Do you think I'll have problems getting into Shenzhen from Hong Kong? I am European. No. I don't think so. I think it'll be fine. They have you know, that VOA for a reason. I, there is one thing though that I, I have to say about that is you can never be guaranteed. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, because they do change the policy a lot. That that VOA, if you are European, mm. but it depends what European country. Yeah, if you're from Belarus, actually, you probably get more points. No, I, seriously, like, if you're from a country that they don't like at the particular time, you won't be able to do it. Mm. And it is very country specific. It is. It's well, incredibly check, like so, South Africans can't get it, for instance. Go online. Um, we'll figure it out. But yes, just. To be honest, here's my advice, and I give it to everybody. If you want to know what's going on with the visa situation, just get a hold of the Forever Bright Visa Agency in Hong Kong. Do they still exist? I'm pretty sure they do. They're they, like a pikey little company. They are a tiny they little work. little office, but they always know what's happening. Sure. They deal with visas every day, and they will tell you based on your uh, nationality, your yeah. age, your sex, you, you know, all that kind of stuff, whether or not you can get if a visa. If they still exist. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Next up, uh, Peter Zmolik, P- Pet- Petr, I don't know, it's Slavic or something. Uh, I torn to the conquering southern China. It was hard to get it since Amazon isn't active here in Eastern Europe. So here's the money. Thank you very much. Uh, do you plan to go to Czechia and Eastern Europe on a bike trip? Well, I'm, I would like to say thank you, mate, for that, because we have a lot of people that pirate our stuff. And, mm. you know, it does hurt when people do that, considering That's, the amount of... I swore at the people last time. <laughs> yeah. but this guy paid back. The, no, just don't tell our producers. Just fully, uh, <laughs> like, seriously, fully respect you for actually doing thank that you and much. paying appreciate us back. That. We appreciate that. And yes, we'll go to Czechia. Yeah. I'd love to buy a castle. It'd be awesome. This is super cheap. Really? Dude, then I can broadcast from a real castle Dude, instead of this broadcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Cool. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. Alrighty, George says, uh, communism is the best because it kills more communists than any capitalist pig could ever dream of. I hope California doesn't get any worse. My AR-15s are getting banned one by one. Lol. Yeah, I don't think that's the thing we've got to wade into today. <laughs> did, but, did you see uh, the one with that bumper sticker? Which one? The abortion gun thing. Yeah, what about it's it? That, it's probably that guy, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, the, thanks you, for the super chat. Appreciate y- it. Yeah, you got to be careful about uh, political opinions. You know, you can't let it all out there. You know, because no. you're gonna piss somebody off. Sure. So who knows? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up in the air whether I support or am against whatever that bumper sticker said. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go all out on the pronunciation here. Josema Fernandez Barreras. Says, when are you coming to Spain? Uh, here, here we love motorbikes and have very nice roads for you too. And then with the upside down uh, exclamation points because they're nice, you know course. Spanish. Gotta throw, the, gotta throw the Spanish flair in there. Gracias. Um, we will. I mean, everyone that says like, when are you coming to here? We can say that we will, but we don't know when. And we appreciate the invite. Look, we're we're definitely planning on going to wherever we can. And especially with this new YouTube channel that mm. we're working on at the moment, it's going to open up possibly many more travel opportunities, we hope. So hope we'll so. see. Yeah. We'll see. Thank you. Mm. Cool. I also, I've got to correct myself because she's from Spain, so it's Fernandez with this, oh, the lisp. Right. Mea culpa. All right. Uh, big text again. The super chat has been demonetized. But it's monetized because you gave us 550. So thank you. <laughs> uh, Robert. If slash when China has to face a recession due to its economic plateauing or an ongoing trade war, what direction might you consider the CCP going? And how would the Chinese populace react to poor CCP economy? 
I mean, the that's CC- what's happening now. Yeah, it's literally you just said what's happening currently. Mm. Um, you'll see more rhetoric, more cutting off, and you'll see military intervention when the populace gets out of control. There will be a blame, mm. and they won't take it. Nope. And so that's why they have to say that foreigners are the reason why. I don't think the Chinese government's admitted one wrongdoing in history. No. Not even joking. No, I don't think they have. You know, they the, those terrible things that happened in the past, like, oh, yeah, there were a couple well, of mistakes a made. Of mistake. yeah, a couple of mistakes oh, made. A Come on, how about saying, we are so sorry that we pretty much murdered your grandparents and, and you <laughs> and know brainwashed the entire destroyed future. all of our history and our temples and mm. our beautiful culture of you know but we will bring it back it's more like oh a couple of mistakes mate don't worry we're America's great so bad they're so bullish yeah you can you can go buy lv prada now yeah there mm. you go anyway or like i mean what i posted on instagram about american and british universities saying oh we're like we're sorry for how we benefited from the slave trade 400 years ago yeah. but then china their universities don't apologize for like, oh, sorry, our students march in the streets and held signs that said death to black people right. in the 1970s and 80s, which was not even that long ago. Right. Uh, next. next question. Yeah. Adam's bookie. ADV Cal- Cali meetup soon. Oh, man. The last one we had was horrendous. Yeah, we already talked about I that. I mean, though. yeah. It, you know, we, we have to be very careful with this because last time um, it was fantastic. Mm. We met a lot of good people. Mm-hmm. But... We didn't realize so many people would turn up. and That's where you met me. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Thing is, we, we basically organized with our friend who runs a barbecue, Chinese barbecue restaurant. And what, what would you say the capacity of that place was? 20. 20, 30 people. Mm. We had about 300 people turn up. Two or three. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it was amazing, but we actually had people have, standing around the parking lot. We didn't sit down once. Um, yeah, nobody. We didn't eat anything. But I felt bad more for everyone else. Who's, I'm saying, like, no one yeah. got <laughs> Yeah. I, I think everybody was expecting to come sit down, have some nice Chinese barbecue mm. and chat, and that's what I wanted. Yeah, um, We massive. thought 20 or 30 people might turn up, and too many people turned up, so we have to be careful about these meetups. It we might will be more do of an it. event. Yeah, we will do it for sure in the future, but mm. we have to be, you know, plan it properly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Luke Skinner from the chat says, hey, bro, come to Antarctica. Okay. Right there. Reminds me of that. That's like the whole come to Brazil. That's a meme. Uh, okay. Where like people will just go on YouTube and comment on like Michael Jackson's video. Hey, come to do a tour in Brazil, oh, okay. <laughs> even though he's already dead. <laughs> okay. uh, okay. Next okay. up, Tyler Freeman gave us fifty dollars. Thanks, you are the bomb. I did catch your your question because it was in the normal chat and not the super chat, but it said, "Winston, welcome to the USA. Uh, good luck. Sea milk, welcome back." The question is, have people in China felt any change monetarily from the trade war? I've noticed no changes here in the U.S. Thank you very much. That was very generous of you. Um, I'm getting messages from my parents-in-law and some friends saying that the price of food is going up. Pork, but specifically. Uh, specifically pork, but food in general, mm. really. Um, I'm not, I don't think there's been like a huge massive effect yet, yeah. uh, but it is infecting. It's affecting investors one, and things like that. One thing that's kind of interesting is how our parents-in-law are telling our wives to be careful because everything's going to be more expensive in America. Right yeah, now. that's what I've been hearing. Everything's yeah. collapsing. Yeah, because in, in the local media in China, they are basically saying that everything's more expensive now in America mm. because of the trade war, which is not true because myself living here now, I have seen nothing change. No. Not as the, the, the price of milk and bread and what have you has not shifted one dog iota. milk is incredibly expensive <laughs> dog milk yeah man <laughs> don't know where we're gonna get more of that yeah. but uh yeah the reason the pork is going up so much is that they're having this massive african swine flu yeah. outbreak in china and it's big about a third of the population of the pigs have just died from mm-hmm. this had to rest be destroyed peace. yeah rest in pork um and and it's a big thing and because of the the trade tariff war thing you know china basically doesn't want to buy pork from america and they say oh we're not going to buy from in canada you. yeah yeah like, oh canadian bacon nah something wrong with that to be fair canadian bacon's awful <laughs> okay real bacon's awesome um but yes but yeah. i i do think that the consumer is being hit uh when it comes to basic things like um pork and all that kind of thing don't yeah. f- don't forget um all the soy products that are being no longer being bought from america it's actually not exactly what you think it's because they've had all the swine flu and stuff. They don't actually have that many pigs to feed anymore because mm. they usually end up feeding them soy yeah. products and things yeah. like that. So that's another angle to look at. Cool. Uh, Cesario JPN in the comments said, Winston, FB- FBT China Visa Agency does seem to have an active website to answer your question from earlier. 
Thank you. Yeah, isn't, I wonder if they still got that same website. It looks like someone in 1995. It's like My first web page. Yeah, Angel It's got fire. like a little gif of like, like a, a web a, counter. A guy, yeah, a web counter, a guy on a like, suitcase flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, flying. Do you want to go to China? <laughs> they're, they're a great company. plays music in the background. They, they really are a good company though, yeah. Sweet. Trevor Travels the World says, uh, Winston, South Africa video when? I feel like I already know the answer, but tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, I, I'm actually going to do a live stream tomorrow about it, talking about the xenophobic attacks and stuff. It's yeah. uh, something that I have been. I, I asked the community. I said, "Do you want me to do another China video or talk about this?" Mm. Um, and it's it's kind of hilarious uh, because we met a Nigerian the other day, yeah. and um, I was like, "Oh, you're from Nigeria. I'm from South Africa." And he's like, "Why are you Why are you guys killing everyone?" <laughs> I was like, okay, "Yeah, okay, I got to talk about this." Sure. So yeah, we'll we'll have that tomorrow for sure. Yeah. All right, Stuart Mills just gave us five dollars, no question, unless it was like the other one that got lost in the chat. Thanks, so man. if it was lost in the sauce, I apologize, but thank you, thank you for the five bucks. Dan Ferrance, Dan the Man, says, another great episode, guys. Off topic, Sea Milk, you need to take Winston to an American concert now that you're in the States. It's not a bad idea. You know who wants thank you, Dan, by the way. You know who wants to see a concert more is actually my wife. It's so hard to find babysitters that I trust them. You know, babysitters, scum of the earth. I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, if I can find someone to watch the kids, I totally want to take baby to a concert. No, I'm sure we'll hit a concert. I've, de I've definitely told my babysitter story, haven't I? Which one? Oh, God, I don't know if I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, okay, should I tell the babysitter story? We're th over time already. I know. Tell like a one-sentence version. That's not really possible. This is the Winston show, did you forget? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Talk about first, how you first of all, lost I, your virginity to no, your babysitter. No, no, I think it's it's absolutely <laughs> fantastic that you um, uh, you know suggest the, the concert thing because I'd love to go to a concert. Yeah. I've, I've only ever once been to one concert in my life. Wow, it was, it was like Diary of Dreams, which is like this goth Diarrhea of Dreams. Oh, Diary <laughs> of Dreams. Sorry. It's like this goth <laughs> band in South Africa in Johannesburg because I actually helped organize the event. Yeah, I was part, right, right. You know, with all the that, that oh, you played of, them for me before in the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Pretty no, terrible. They're, they're like they're German, you know, yeah. a German goth band. Anyway, um, I got I got to tell my my right. my babysitter story. So, um, <laughs> when I was younger, my my parents would hire a babysitter every Thursday, um, mm. so they could go out on date night. You know, yeah. something you should consider, mm. so that you could go to a concert with your wife. Mm. It's not that hard Thanks to get that. a babysitter like once a week or something. Mm. Anyway, so they used to it's hire this, this babysitter, and <laughs> we had a. Um, we had this like assignment at school and I'm, this is like I was young so I must have been like seven or eight or something like that and they were like choose any f country flag and draw it mm. okay now oh yeah I remember okay that. so I'm just like I'm a very naive child at the time but I used to love reading those war comics and you know like um I don't know if you ever got those in the States, but they're a big thing in like Britain and because South Africa and my family is yeah, British, yeah. we get those like, and it's always got showing how you get courage and stuff and like the cowardly soldier who finds out how to be like courageous. And mm. so, and it's like, oh, I got him, Sarge, you know, that kind of thing. And you're busy like flipping through this. And I, I used to love building little model airplanes and stuff, even though I couldn't do it properly. So I would always like make spitfires and Messerschmitts and stuff. And so, for whatever reason, I decided that I'd draw a swastika because I was reading in my comic, my, like, war comic about the Nazis attacking the Americans and, right. and the, sorry, the British. So, like, I thought, now, that's a really cool-looking flag. So, here I am drawing this thing. And I just went to go show it to my babysitter. And I was like, look what I did for my homework. And she almost, like, fell over. <laughs> and she uh, sat me down something. and she was like, do you understand that blood, right. the, the red, cause like you know, symbolizes the blood of the Jews? Turns out she's Jewish. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. It was wow. total, totally innocent mistake. Of course, of course. I know everybody out there is going to be like, see, he's a Nazi I'm just, from I'm birth. Just, I'm just worried that people are going to cut that clip out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was... You're like, uh, ha ha, Nazi, ha, show us a guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be like a super cut. That's just one of my uh, embarrassing, like, uh, youthful mm. tales. I mean, it is an aesthetic flag, let's be real. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks... It's a looks Buddhist symbol, right? I was so shocked fine. when I went to Taiwan. It's everywhere. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what it symbolizes is <laughs> awful, but like when you're a young boy looking through like these magazines, it's a striking design. Yeah, it like, looks that different looks than a cool. star. 
Yeah. yeah. You don't, you know, like the American flag kind of looks like it should be on a popcorn holder or something. You know, it's all like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so you say, but it's all like sparkly. Get out of here. Sparkly and colorful. Big. I mean, it's this colorful. It's our America. It's super colorful. It it's colorful. like, you know, it looks cool. It's like, mm. you know. Some popcorn eating tin. popcorn with this like you know blue and yeah. white striped popcorn right. you know what i mean yeah that's what i'm a, trying to say yeah. there maybe that's what, what south african popcorn looks like you wouldn't be eating like a swash sticker like uh, they probably popcorn. did in germany no maybe yeah. maybe <laughs> anyway, anyway this is totally off topic Tangent sorry guys. Of no. all right uh, yeah, uh, uh dion chapman two. comes in again he says hey uh the south china morning post just reported that tank man the tank man photographer charlie cole has died Oh, that's well. That's tragic. Rest in peace, man. Mm, yeah, that was a good photo. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Breaking news on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey Moon says South China Sea's excuse for war due to economic collapse? Question mark. I mean, honestly, China does have all these little future buffers. So if things go tits up, they can do something. Mm. You know, because like if I don't think they'll ever take back Taiwan. Yeah. But if the economy does completely tank and then the populace starts going ape, then the next thing will be like, whoa, we got to reunify China. That's why everything is going to hell. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's when something will happen. So, yeah. It's, it's tough to say. You know, the South China Sea is just very contentious because you've got a bunch of different countries all of course. claiming that that space has been their own. And China wants the China is piece, just though. bullying their way in there mm. by building artificial islands mm. and, you know, putting military on them and stuff. And it's it's kind of in poor taste. Yeah. But what it's can you do? Taste. I mean, it is. It is. What can you do? Uh, somebody just made a good point. They said that if they announce that the tank man photographer died, does that mean that they're acknowledging that there was a tank man to begin with? Oh. <laughs> well, the South China, China Morning Post is kind of a Hong oh, Kong actually, yeah. thing. Yeah, so they, they have a lot of Beijing influence now. But yeah, but they're still, still kind of fairly semi-independent. The fact that they can even talk about that yeah, yeah, is sure. shows you that they're not under the control the of thumb. Beijing. Yeah. The honey pot. Cool. All right. Uh, do you guys want to get to some of these Instagram questions? Yeah, we got we, we to snap through them. All right. Uh, question one. How to keep a long-distance relationship with a Chinese girl? Don't. That's a tough one, dude. Just don't. <clears throat> I, I would say with uh, with any relationship, long distance is very difficult to keep going anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> should, Canada, should Canada fight back with sanctions in the dispute over the arrest of Meng Wangzhou? I mean, yeah, it's tit for tat, right? I don't believe in the arbitrary arrest of our friends in China, right? No. And I don't think there should be arbitrary arrests. There should be rule of law. But sanctions are legitimate punishment. Yeah, I, I do think that it's, it's absolutely ridiculous what's happened because Canada was literally just following the law, okay? Mm. And it's not even Canada's fault. It's America wanted her to be arrested. And mm. because of the agreement... They detained well, her. She did break and the law. She, of course she broke the law. <laughs> the thing is that she's being set through a proper, you know, Judicial process. System, yeah. And she's able to sit in her mansion. In fact, I think she's now moved into a bigger mansion mm -hmm. now. She's able to go out shopping. She mm -hmm. just has to be accompanied with, my, you know, security guards. My message to China is if, mm. if she's being treated so well... Yeah. And the, the rule of law in her mansion, all this kind of stuff in Canada. I at least ask you, Chinese government, to allow our friend to not be under 24-hour fluorescent lights. Yes. To be allowed to talk to people, not have six to eight-hour struggle sessions, and be locked up for absolutely no reason and not face court. Yeah. Because that's what's happening to him. So shut the hell up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I do think that the whole world has to stop accepting these, these kind of bad behaviors. You know, it's hard to explain. When you have lived in China for as long as we have, and you understand the risk that goes on, a lot of foreigners that go, they don't understand the risk. It's a big party for them. They think everything's cool. And especially people that, you know, maybe they, they're they just oblivious. So they purposefully are oblivious to what might happen to them and what is happening around them. It's like those stupid foreigners that go over there and smoke weed and think mm. it's fine. You know, those kind of people. You can at any point, once you cross that Chinese border, you can be arbitrarily detained. You can have your life turned upside down. There's nothing you can do about it. Nope. There's no law. There's no process that will allow you to just back out and get back over. It's not like in any normal developed country where there is a proper law and you can hire a lawyer who can actually stand up. Because in China, if a lawyer tries to 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 defend you too well, they will get locked up too. Yeah. You Unless know? he's from Ireland. 
<laughs> Today's just a lawyer. <laughs> lawyer, yeah. No, but quite seriously, though, it's horrible because the things that, that are happening in China, which is not the fault of Chinese people, no. but, you know, all the crap that's going on in, in Xinjiang with mm. the concentration camps and all that, it's happening. It's not a lie. No. It's actually there. I don't understand why... Most, why is no one talking yeah, about this? The, most of the world literally stands back and says, oh, it's okay. Like, it's kind of their own internal thing. It's not okay. No. It's not. Imagine if that happened in America. All these concentration camps start popping up in 2019. Yeah. Putting, putting randos in there. I mean, what if it happened in Germany? Yeah. You know? It's like the people would condemn the crap out of, of it. Of course. Or any country. But because it's China, you don't want to piss off China. I, you know what? My, my least favorite comment these days mm-hmm. is people are like, are, aren't you afraid uh, for speaking out against the Chinese government and stuff? You shouldn't do this. My advice to you in like private message, you shouldn't be doing this because you're in danger. It doesn't matter where you are. Dude, no. no. Absolutely sure. not. Sure. Why should the rest of the world kowtow to this absolute bullying dictatorship? Yes. Why? Yeah, there are a lot of horrible things that the Chinese government is doing at the moment, uh, and it when it hits you so close to home. Yeah, one of the care. one of the Canadians that was arrested in reprisal for the Meng Wanzhou is is our, our friend. friend. Okay, it's somebody that we know. He's it's, in political prison, being yeah. tortured, and he hasn't done anything wrong. We no. know him personally. He's not. At least give him a trial. He's not you know? a bloody spy. Uh, I mean, like they accuse me of being a spy, you of being a spy. So if, oh, if we- they. Yeah. If, if they think that someone like me could be a spy, yeah, it just shows you how stupid they are. <laughs> I'm getting that, sorry. Anyway, I just want to chime in. People in the chat are saying, "Well, oh, well, we have concentration camps in the U.S., but those are specifically like Im- illegal immigrants that are coming in." Mm-hmm. In Xinjiang, it they, they are nominally like Chinese citizens, right? Yes, and they. And it's not like they're coming from another country where those people have a no. homeland. It is their homeland yes. that has been taken over and their own culture is being erased in the only place that it even exists. Because yes. the Xinjiang area is like very unique and has tons of history right. and it's basically being erased. It's not like Trump is trying to wipe Mexico clean off the slate of the face of the earth. No, it's not yeah, even yeah, comparable. You, you can't compare. But look, I do understand the people that say things like that because they live in such a bubble. People, mm. uh, and it's something I've noticed living here. America is such a paradise. It really is. It's right. such a fantastic place to live that when you see something that's slightly disagreeable, it seems very severe. Sure, sure. Whereas sure. if you live in a place where you see very severe things all the time, these things that they complain about just seem like little little drops, drops in the ocean. Mm, yeah. It's like really ridiculous. The kind of things that are going on in in China are pretty damn appalling. severe. Absolutely appalling. Yeah. And we're only seeing 10% of it. And to the same person who put that comment out there, look at you. You're making a big stink about these things that are happening, these so-called right. you know, concentration camps in America. And so is the press. You know, and every so is everyone else. Every single time there's a chance and you, do will, it. you will see people trying to... You know, say, oh, Trump's bad and this is bad and this. that's all I ever see everywhere, right? Mm. It's out there. But that's what we're saying. In China, it's not out there. No. It's like, oh, it doesn't exist. And then they'll like send some people to try and check it out and they'll take it. Just because it's not reported and people don't know about it doesn't mean it's not bad. Yeah. Okay? It's It's bad. It's It's really bad. Very, very bad. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, anyway, yeah, we're once again getting off Let's topic. Let's read these questions. Yes. We got more super chats okay, coming in. Cool. So this is why it's good that we go over time. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so Grady Gillis, $20, thank, thank you very you. much, says, uh, how risky do you think it would be f- uh, for you two to return to China now that you've been quite a bit more openly critical, call it honest, from the U.S.? Honestly, it, it's, you don't even have to use us as the example. It depends on the ebb and flow of the relationship of said country with China. So you can go there and be totally safe if China decides that that day it needs to be friendly towards that country. It'll wipe the slate clean. As yeah. soon as the, uh, the China decides that it's time to be mean to that country in retaliation, then you'll get the book thrown at you. And we would be higher level than the average person to get the book thrown at us. Yeah. To answer your question a little bit more directly, I would not try to go back into China right now. Not right now. What I would do, quite honestly, is I would wait to see Mm. if things change. Because China is that way, you know? Mm. Like, if the... It's all about the feel, what's Mm. going on in society right now. And uh, once this trade war hopefully comes to an amicable end on both, Mm. both sides, once things are squared away... And once this current anti-foreigner kind of vibe and rhetoric goes away, if it goes away, mm-hmm. 
then I would feel incredibly comfortable to go back into mm. China. But until then, I will still be going to Taiwan and Hong mm. Kong and every other Chinese Same. kind of country. So, yeah. Sorry, All right. Mm. Swadafa gave us 200 NOK, which is probably Norwegian kroner, but I like to think it's North Korean dollars. <laughs> uh, Nokia cash. Yeah, Nokia uh, North bucks. Korean cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he says, awesome show, guys. After my trip to Taiwan this summer, I was inspired to learn Chinese, but I feel the progression is too slow. Any advice to learn Chinese faster? Also, you should come to Norway and do a bike trip. For sure. Love we, Norway. We Been said there. this a couple times, right? Go watch my videos. Search, how did I learn Chinese? Mm -hmm. Is Chinese the most difficult language in the world? Um, can I speak Chinese? These are all language learning videos I did about how I got to fluency. Yeah, it's pretty Check good. It it's pretty good. Cool. And yeah, just immerse yourself. Yes. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Dan Ferentz, Dan the Man back again, says, are you guys thinking, are you guys bringing back the two clowns shirts I missed out this summer? Danny boy. Um, actually, if you email Everpress right now, they're doing a rerun um, for the people that missed out. Okay. So if you go and email um, Everpress, you know, the company that we use based out of England, just say you're interested in the two clowns shirts. Uh, I think a couple, for a couple of weeks, you'll probably be able to get another one. Yeah. It's cool. it, Sweet. That's possible. All right. Bad data. Gave us five New Zealand dollars, thank you. He's our friend with the, the Varg picture with the hammer and sickle on it, which is still the weirdest combination I can think of. Uh, he says, Julian Assange, ICE, foreign wars, who holds the moral high ground? And this ain't what aboutism, it's just better to lead by example. Wait, what? Um, I, Sorry, I didn't know it was like idea. salad to me. I think he's saying that, yes, uh, that the, the West should lead by example by being like perfect moral paragons mm -hmm. or something. But I think it, this actually brings to, to mind another, like a conversation I had with someone that relates back to kind of what we were talking about before, which is with uh, pollution, like a lot of, most of the pollution comes from third world industrializing countries, you know, like Indonesia, China and all that. And we have like Bernie Sanders and stuff coming out and saying, oh, we need to go hard, like intensely on environmentalism and everything. And people are constantly talking, like they always talk about per capita, uh, resource usage of the U.S. versus right. China or something, but if you look just on a baseline, you know all of those Asian countries do like seventy percent of world's pollution, if not more. Right. And nobody ever talks about that because they always want to make it about oh well the the you like American taxpayers need to uh, pay massive things just so that we can sort of try to compensate for the the third world polluting so much. And I was talking to somebody about it. Because they were saying, oh, it's really good that we're doing this. And I was like, well, I mean, we're kind of screwed anyways. Because you're not going to get China to stop polluting. Right. You're not going to get Indonesia to stop polluting. And they're like, well, we still need to try. We still need to lead by example. And it's kind of like, yes, it's good. We need to not destroy our environment at the same time. But on a world scale, as one globe, we're kind of screwed, to be honest. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And China well, will never follow the example of anyone other than themselves. No, I, I get what, this, what that's specific uh, guy is trying to say is he's trying to it, it does sound a little bit like whataboutism because yeah, we, we're, we're, we're calling out China for its bad behavior mm -hmm. so it's like oh what about America's right, right. like Julian Assange blah 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 dude the fact that you can talk about this stuff shows you that it's a better system the fact right. that you can go out there and complain and you'll have sympathizers with you Whereas we should criticize. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you can criticize any bad policy of any country, mm. you know, and that's what's nice. But you can't do that in China. You have to understand. You can't. You got to understand. Just, China, yeah, you got to understand China. Say. So you see, just by you putting that question out there, you've already proven which is the better system. Yes. Bingo. And thank you. I think uh, somebody in the comments put it perfectly. They said, environmentalism ends with you cooking bugs and your dead grandpa on a dung fire while your overlord eats steaks. <laughs> and that is like, literally, there have been news articles where it's like, the West needs to start eating like maggot uh, <laughs> yeah, meals, cockroach cockroaches, in order to, <laughs> to fight uh, pollution. And it's like, bro, I'm gonna, everyone's gonna wanna move to China. If they're, like, I'll eat dog before I eat freaking bugs. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a yeah. great way to end. Yeah. I'll eat All dog right. before I eat bugs. Fantastic. Guys, look, thank you very much for watching. Yeah. And as always, if we've offended somebody, you know, it's not... We don't have not, to do this I, I gotta say, crap. I got to say, like, I'm not out there to offend people. I do not I want know. to. But we know. Yes, I definitely want this to be educational. Yes. What we do, the reason we do this show Most is to... Most of all, entertaining. Yeah, okay, entertaining. But 
we want you to understand that there's, you know, China is very opaque. Yes. Why do you think it is that I'm the first person to ever make YouTube videos out of China? Uh. Why do you think so many people look to my videos to try to find out what was going on in China to see what China was all about? It's because it's so opaque. Right. You know, from the outside looking in a place like America is incredibly transparent. You can see everything that's going on here. In fact, anyone does a little misstep in America, it's magnified and broadcast out mm. to the world for everyone to see. But when China does massively bad things, you won't know about it, mm. you know. And when China does good things, you won't know about it either. That's no. the whole thing. China is an opaque society. And so what we're doing here is we're trying to help people understand what's actually happening, mm. you know, in real life in China and also just pointing out all the hypocrisy and the crap that goes along with it. So I hope you found it uh, entertaining and uh, informative. That's our end goal here. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It was a great outro, but we got another super chat. Quick. <laughs> all right. Maroc Targaryen, $10, thank you. Thank says, you. not sure if you covered it, but what do you think about world, the World Civilization Research Association believing all European history before the 15th century is fake and English language is actually Chinese? I think uh, that's absolute that, bull. Yeah, it sounds like a it lot of like crap. trash. It I just sounds that. like super chat. Though. How about the Flat Earth Society? Yeah. Have you renewed your membership? <laughs> <laughs> and let's end on that. Yeah. Then. Anyway, see you guys next time. And in fact, I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, a video about South Africa. So tune in to Serpents at a 5 p.m. California time. Cool. I heard dinosaurs don't exist, by the way. <laughs> it's a test of your faith when you find a fossil. See you guys. See you guys next time. Cheers.